guy is the OG. This guy is the man. The great influence in British fitness, British bodybuilding. Guys, my man, Sean Stafford. <laughs> he's lying, he didn't even know who I was until last week. This guy, this guy is the man, and he's gonna explain why, but this is gonna be a very fast paced workout which you're gonna implement into, into your routine. It's gonna be a lot of supersets, it's gonna burn like hell, and um, yeah, hopefully we should get out of this. This is, this is what I call, it's a Friday, we're training arms, it's Fat Arm Friday. Fat Arm Friday, I like getting, that. Getting ready to go out I like that. for the weekend. The repetition, I'm doing 20 reps, how many reps are you doing? 20? Yeah. <laughs> I might do 15. I, I, I might do 15. I, I need to grow, man. Okay, I, I'm, okay. Tr I'm trying to grow. I mean, how, how long have you been training for? I've been training a long time. I've been probably training for 20 years. There you go. Yeah. 20 years. I'm still, I'm still a baby in this game, guys. I'm, 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 I'm actually trying to lose muscle. Jeez. No joke. I'm trying to just tighten everything down, balance out my body a bit. Yeah. So, I think, I think 15, 20 reps is a good. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there's the reason why I'm doing that. For me, I'm trying to incorporate a lot more high repetitions. Because you've seen from my videos, I've been training like really heavy. So my rep ranges have been, you know, anywhere between five and eight. And I really want to start getting more volume in there by doing high reps. It burns, it hurts, but you'll see why. You Shuttles see why. that lactic acid around, gets the growth hormone levels pumping. Let's do this. And show more importantly, it uh, gives you a crazy pump for a pump. Um, right. Reps, like I know I'm, I'm the complete opposite. You'll see, you'll see yeah. my set. I'm so used slow. To play rugby, right? Yeah, yeah. So this guy used to play rugby, and I used to play basketball. So you know, some of these sports, you know, it's very, you know, you're constantly changing pace. So basketball is very rapid. So I'm someone that has very fast switch fibers. Yeah. And very powerful, very very explosive. powerful, very explosive. So you see that in a lot of my exercises and everything that I do. And most of the people that I spoke to, all the OGs. When they watch me try, they say, yo, Lee, you gotta slow down your tempo. And it's something that I'm trying to teach myself. Yeah, yeah. Imagine going from like boom, boom, boom to like, okay, we gotta slow things down. Just take your time with the weight, because you know, we're bodybuilding, we're training. You know? with, so, I think with bodybuilding, one of the biggest things that most people overlook is the time under tension per set. It is. So like for, for optimal hypertrophy, sort of muscle growth, you wanna be working at like, a, like a, as close to 80% of your yeah. maximum as you can but for between like 40 and 70 seconds per set. So you break that down to like a, a normal sort of 10 yeah. sort of rep set. Yeah. That's like between four and seven seconds per rep. Yeah. It's brutal. It's right. you, you definitely feel it. I feel the difference. And in terms of building, you know, in terms of building size, you know, the recruited most fibers that are engaged really is what's gonna help to build the overall size and thickness. And when it comes to muscle maturity, that's something that comes into play. We start playing around, with, playing around with those repetitions. With most of my workouts, you see that I kind of, um, I kind of like hibernate within the workouts that I'm doing, within the sets and reps and exercises. Now we're just keeping the pace moving. So yeah, this man, check that out. You aren't gonna look like that. <laughs> so we opened up the workout with a bicep or tricep into bicep superset. What we're now gonna do is do kind of same muscle group, same muscle group. So we're kind of gonna go chin, like a bicep focused pull down into a dumbbell seated kind of like concentration curl. Concentration so curl, two yeah. 
exercises that are going to really focus in on elbow flexion to really hit. Nice hips. There you go, man. exercises so a lot of people do kind of like a chin grip lat pull down but what we're really focusing on here is just closing the gap of the elbow and not really working the lat at all so closing that gap hits the bicep in a completely different way and then using the same bit of kit but using the knee straps as a sorry the knee pads as elbow pads just allows you to really isolate and focus in on the bicep for a concentration curl there you go if I'm honest, I think those 12s are a little bit heavy. Ooh. I think they're a little bit heavy. I'm going to go get the 10s. I'm going to go get the 10s. If you watched your previous episode, I spoke about getting lost in the weight. Sometimes it's very easy, easy <laughs> to push a lot of heavy weight. It's easy in a different sense. I don't think that could really, I don't think that's like relatable to many people, but in a way for me, for example, when I'm squatting like 180, for me, I'm very familiar with the exercise. So for me, my body's used to it. But when you completely switch things up, go lighter, focus more on the breath and the contraction, it's a different story, it's a different ball game. It's a different stimulation to what you're used to when you're lifting heavy. So it's very good to now and again, turn the table, switch things around. Make sure your body, you know, confuse the body essentially. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna superset a body weight sort of tricep dip with a cable cross extension. So we're gonna be kneeling for this one, standing for this one, big core engagement, big joint engagement around the shoulder, but most importantly, we're gonna get a lot of bar skull crusher for the triceps straight into a sort of fat axle bar bicep curl what we're going to do to add a little bit of variation in is we're going to start super wide 
on the barbell curl, bring it narrower and bring it narrower in it. So we're gonna go five, five, five to break up the 15, just to try and knock off as many different sort of parts of the bicep muscle as we can. Basically it's gonna hurt me now. That's what's gonna happen. six foot one yeah. my levers are quite long especially my lower limb levers so my, my femur yeah. and my tibia are quite long so my calves actually look very small mm -hmm. um, if you actually look at my arms which look quite big yeah if you measure my calves and measure my arms yeah. it's literally like half an inch difference yeah so that's a bit of an optical yeah. illusion yeah it's amazing um, right there my, my biggest advice for training calves is it's made up of several different muscles as most people think you know it's one muscle group yeah, it's, it's not, not um, Make sure you hit the soleus, make sure you hit the, the gastrocnemius, which is the major big bulk of it, and treat it like any other muscle. And if you really want it to grow, spend a lot of time and attention on it. It's one of those things where if you chuck in a set here and a set there at the end of your workout, yeah. chances are you're not really yeah. gonna make much progress. Yeah. It's much better if you, if you really want your calves to grow and you really wanna see some development in that area, mm -hmm. you need to dedicate a good 20, 30 minutes to get the volume through your calves and train it multiple times a week. Yeah. Like if you yeah. if you look at like the top guys, 
especially in physique, they usually have a shoulders and calves day where they will spend, you know, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes training just the small muscles in the shoulder and then just the calves. So yeah, if you, you want them to grow, spend time and make sure you're hitting both muscles when you go. There you go. So that's my approach as well. So frequency when it comes to calves. So I, tend, I train them very frequently and I train my, you know, relatively heavy and I've been doing that for a period, for a long period of time. As you can tell, you know, I've got high calf, so high calf insurgents. I don't make excuses, I just train them. You know, the struggle, <laughs> the struggle is so real right now. Like, the struggle is very like, real. So yeah, guys, so just keep training them, be consistent. Over the years I've seen them grow, you know, to some, you know, you know, they're pretty recognizable with that about carbs, you know, so it's not that bad. So, okay, next question is best hours of sleep. So best hour, like how, how much you recommend? What's your recommendation for sleep? This is one of those things, so I've just finished reading a book called The Power of Sleep. Have you read it? I've read it, yeah, but a lot of people read it. It's really, it. and even if you have no time to read a book, um, check out his TED talk mm -hmm. um, or there's some podcasts flying around about it. Talk, yeah. um, so it's, I think sleep is one of those things that is massively underrated. Um, the research and the science out there on sleep and the physiological benefits of it are huge. So they reckon that, so the guy opens up his podcast by saying let's talk testicles. Mm -hmm. So the testicles of a man that sleeps five hours a night yeah. versus a man that sleeps eight hours a night yeah. is up to 40% smaller. Jeez. So this is one of those things where it has a drastic <laughs> impact like on your physiology, your blood markers, inflammation, recovery, all those things are yeah. massively important. The majority of it sort of gets fixed when you're asleep. Yeah. Give yourself enough, enough time to sleep. Yeah. Most people spend kind of the hours before they're going, actually going to sleep like, yeah. dicking around on their phone, yeah, doing things they don't want to do. Like, I think the human race is the only species that yeah. actively keeps itself awake. If you're tired, go to sleep. Prioritize yeah. sleep and you will see That's something I've started doing. Yeah. yeah very frequent. Because for me, what, what, you know, when I started uni, you know, sleep was something that like was almost non-existent. So if I were to look at my average uh, amount of sleep, I would probably used to sleep between three hours to five hours, which is nothing. And you know, obviously I lived a very intensive lifestyle back then, being in college, trying to do my business, trying right. to balance training, you know, and so on. But at the same time, like, I could have easily avoided certain situations so I can get more sleep, but I didn't. So now what I've done this year, I've made more of a commitment to make sure that I get my sleep and I'm getting up to seven to eight hours on a good day, which is good. But even now, it's still not the best. And a lot of people have been telling me that I need to get sleep. And I've seen a huge difference, especially with recovery and the muscle soreness, which is something that we like tell straight off, straight off the bat. So um, yeah, sleep is very important and you really have to monitor it, you know, and make sure you get into a good habit, especially for the longevity of what you're doing. All right, so next question, in terms of calories, how many, how many calories do you consume a day? So this will vary throughout the year. So depending on what sort of my training goal is, what my aesthetic goal is, um, at the moment, I'm about six weeks out from my last holiday of the year. So I'm on like a mini cut. Uh, so I'll be on around about 2,400 calories, which isn't very much, mm -hmm. um, but I'm also a lot lighter than people think. Yeah. So how much do you think I weigh? Ooh, I would definitely say way above 95, so close to 100 kilograms. 88. Jeez. So I actually weigh 88 kilos, so yeah. it's a lot lighter than people think when yeah. they see me. Like they say, oh, yeah. easily 90, 95, but yeah. like I'm 88 kilos. So. Yeah. In terms of a deficit, it's not that huge. Yeah. So I can usually get by between 2,500 and 3,000 calories kind of as maintenance. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to try and lose a bit of body fat or drop down a bit in size, I'll put in a slight deficit to kind of eke off that body fat over a six, seven, eight week yeah. period. One of those things where when you're training some, for something specific that's other than being shredded, yeah. the calories that you're consuming are so important because it's fueling your performance. Exactly, it is. It's then your, body, your body needs calories, there's energy. Yeah. If you don't have energy, you can't perform at work as yeah. well. You can't perform in the gym as well. Yeah. Everything kind of down regulates. So yeah. you're doing the right thing by increasing the amount of calories that you're consuming yeah. over time yeah. to a point where you're, you're, you're working at a very high level where you can actually consume a lot and yeah. still maintain yeah, exactly. relative levels of yeah. lean mass. So yeah, right. so that's one thing. One, uh, so I've been able to increase my cal calories slowly as you know from my training years, and I've been able to maintain a lean physique. You know. Uh, literally all year round. A lot of people ask me, hey, how do you stay lean for every six days a year? I'm like, it's based on what I eat and how much I eat because my body's constantly adapting. But one thing that I would say is when I started training, 
I never used to eat them that many calories. My yeah, calories were so low, but my protein and carbs were so high yeah. based on the food choices I was making. So I realized, you know, the mistake that I made when I was younger, I should have been eating a lot more dense food to build that bulky size, that thickness, that density. Because I was an ectomorph and I was very skinny. Even though I didn't get big, based on the more protein that I was eating, but the calories weren't enough in order to really help me bulk out. So if you're someone that's quite skinny, an ectomorph, I suggest eat more calories because it will change your game completely because that's what I'm doing now. And that's like seven, you know, that's like six years after yeah, really, yeah. well, you know, three to four years after that process. So implement that. So the next question is how many exercises do you recommend for a body part? Oh that's 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 a really it's a good question, but it's very, very specific on what you're training for. As in if we're gonna take hypertrophy, mm -hmm. for example, then you wanna be working in, in around about the eight to 12 rep range, looking at mm -hmm. a, between three to four sets, adding up the total volume, wants to be around 20 to 25 sets yeah. per workout. So then yeah. you just divide that by the number of exercises yeah. that you want. That's, so, pretty, that's pretty much what I do. So my goal <laughs> is literally eight to 12 repetitions, four to six sets. Okay. So my job on, my big, on the bigger muscle group, so for the back, you know, it's a different, you know, it's a big composition of muscle, you know, of different, uh, minor muscle groups. So for the back, I mean, it's quite big, it's quite chunky, just like your legs. So I'll do, you know, anywhere, for, anywhere between four to six, especially on Couple the upper yeah, sets. Yeah, especially, yeah. I tend to hit more of the, you know, upper sets, so up to six sets on my legs. Because legs, you know, they can enjoy a lot more than your smaller muscle groups. And, you know, you have to be able to distinguish, you know, between the, type of, the different type of muscle groups that I engage and how much you can withstand over a period of time. Because I can't go in and smash my arms the way I do my legs. No. Chances are you might end up pulling something, but obviously you have to understand that you know just provide enough volume for it to break down the fibers, regrow. Right, okay, let's see what's the next one we got here. Uh, this is the same questions. I don't think it's refreshing. Um, you got your four G. We're good. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I got that. That's why. Uh, How to shred belly fat fast? Yes, that's a good one. Okay, so okay, this yeah. this. This is the age old, this is probably the most, most common question that I get asked at expos, on, <laughs> from my Instagram, yeah. on everything. Everyone's like, oh, how do you drop body fat? And there, there's a lot of complicated ways of doing it, but there's also, if you take three very simple principles, mm -hmm. you can break it down so it's effective for most people. Mm -hmm. The first one has to be um, to be in a small but significant calorie deficit. That means you need to work out how many calories you're consuming to maintain your body weight and your body fat level, mm -hmm. and then reduce that by anywhere from 200 to 500 yeah. calories per day. If that equates over a week to about three and a half thousand calories, you should lose a pound of weight, hopefully a pound of body fat mm -hmm. per week. Yeah. If you can do that, then you need to be looking, the second thing I would recommend is to have a diet high in sort of lean, good quality protein. So for that, uh, a ballpark figure you want to be hitting would be about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, okay, or two grams of protein per kilo, yeah, give or take. Yeah, if that's... you can if you can hit that, mm -hmm. it means that your body's going to be able to sustain lean tissue and any sort of damage, the metabolic damage that you do through resistance training, um, will be able to repair itself and you'll be able to hold on to mass and grow. The third thing is follow a progressive resistance program. Mm -hmm. So this means lift weights in a way that is structured and gets you stronger and with increasing volume over time. People think they need to be training every day, they don't. As mm -hmm. in anywhere between three to four times a week is optimal. Yep. Um, so if you're clever with your programming or you find a good program that you, that you get on with, that it works well with your body and that you can stick to over a period of time, there we go then that is the most important thing. So calorie deficit, diet high in natural good protein, and then follow a progressive resistance program three to four to five times a week. There you go. See, the guy that should explain it is so simple, but so straightforward. I don't think anyone could explain it any better than that. So, you know, when you see me train, most people ask me, you know, how frequently you train. Yeah. I train six to seven days a week, and that's just based on my passion for training. Not necessarily just you're a professional you know, athlete like, as well. That's like <laughs> yes. trying to be. Yeah. Like that, that that's how I train, that's my passion. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to the average person because they won't be able to sustain that. Because what you're doing should be sustainable for a longer period of time in order for you to see the long term benefits of that workout or that program that you're doing. General population, if you're interested in fitness and you don't want to get into too much of a fad diet, yeah. Um, 
if you go with 50% of your calories coming from from carbohydrate, yeah. 20% from fat, and mm-hmm. around 30% from protein. Yeah. And then with the with the carbohydrate and the protein, there can be a little bit of give yeah. and take. So yeah. you can go Based 40, your, 40, yeah. 20, 40, um, yeah. that sort of ratio in terms yeah. of your macronutrients. That's like the most base, that's like the most yeah. straightforward thing. Regardless, you'll be able to build some mass, or if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to be, if you're trying to lose weight, be in a deficit and also tweak those, and you'll be okay. And also most of the most of the common foods that are available. So you go to a you go to a restaurant, you go to a yeah. A, a fast food takeaway place or whatever. Yeah, it's the you know the, it's very very hard for you to sustain stuff like some of these fad diets like keto or something like that mm. because most things that you have and most things that you eat contain multiple macronutrients. Mm-hmm. So if you're restricting one of them, if you're going super low fat, chances are the food that's available will have it's fat. Be, yeah, it's going to be the complete opposite. If you're going super yeah, low carb, carb yeah, chances are the food that's available to you will have carbs in them. Yeah. So it just makes your life yeah. harder. Yeah, so you got to be cautious <laughs> of that. The, the one reason why I'm able to sustain my lifestyle, my you know my you know very strict diet for the years, is because I didn't go too over like overboard with being like too strict or you know under eating. It's always been in the middle, both in terms of like if I'm adding ingredients to add flavor, you know I don't restrict you know too much salt on sodium or too much on sugars. I just keep it in the middle and I always use the right ingredients to ensure that my my diet is equally balanced. So when I do go out, my body's not being, my body's not being exposed to something that's so different yeah. to why you know you end up you know holding more water or correct you know vice versa so guys that's just a quick tip from the man himself so hopefully you've learned something if you are got any questions feel free to hit him up i'll put his information below and you can find him on instagram at at sean stafford so it's s-h-a-u-n-s-t-a-f-f-o-r-d and in terms of training um it's uh, to be honest. Most of the stuff I do is through is through YouTube. Yeah, I have a, so, sorry, it's through Instagram. Yeah, I don't really do YouTube. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, we're both we're, you know we're both related in the sense that you know we're actually trying you know with YouTube. I'm trying you know like you guys know that YouTube is not my you know it's not my thing, but I'm trying to build on that to make sure I give you the best content because most of you watch my Instagram content, but it's just never been enough. So yeah, make sure to shoot my me- uh, shoot a message. And if you're in London, feel free to check out the gym. I'll put the information below and the location and everything that you need to know, you find it below. So guys, thanks for checking in. And we smash to sort of work out. Peace. Bye.